Good morning children. Today we shall continue with the same lesson that chapter 3 major water bodies. So in the previous class we discussed or we had discussed about the uh, four major, uh, sorry five major oceans of the world. Isn't it? Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern and the Arctic Ocean. So today we shall discuss with the importance of oceans and the other major water bodies. So as you know oceans these are the body of salt water that covers nearly three quarters of the earth and uh, this particular water body that's a uh, ocean it's an important component of the hydrosphere therefore it's very integral to life because it plays an important role in the hydrological cycle uh, it influences the weather pattern and many more so let us discuss some of the importance of oceans so first one energy resource so you must have heard about the tidal energy. Now what actually is a tide? It's a rise and fall in the level of the ocean, water twice a day. So this energy which is harnessed from the natural rise and fall of the ocean water is known as the tidal energy. And this tidal energy is a renewable source of energy. That means it can be used again and again. Okay, and a special generator is used to convert this tidal energy into electricity. So this is the first importance that energy resource. Number two, navigation. Now navigation means is transportation over water. And as you know, this uh, water body is an important or it's the oldest and the cheapest means of transportation. It's oldest as well as the cheapest means of transportation. Okay. So all the major, uh, what is it, the trade routes and all are over the ocean sunny. Then next one, marine ecosystem. Now marine means sea. Okay. They are rich in seafood. Like they provide us with fish. Uh, shrimp and many other sea products. So they are the storehouse of marine ecosystem or you can say they are the source of marine food. The next one, source of minerals and mineral oil. So oceans are also rich in minerals and mineral oil like petroleum, natural gas, okay, and these are the important source of energy for us. Then number five, sustaining the hydrological cycle. Now, what is this hydrological cycle? It's also known as the water cycle. So, it is a continuous movement of water on above and below the earth. Or we can say it as the continuous, uh, sorry, continuous circulation of water within the earth's hydrosphere. That is now uh, example, when the uh, water evaporates, okay, due to the heat of the sun, the water from the ocean, they evaporate, okay. So, it's on page number 29. So, please follow the book also, your textbook also. So, constant evaporation due to the heat of the sun, the constant evaporation and condensation leads to cloud formation and then eventually rainfall. Isn't it? So this is how the continuous supply of water is maintained on the earth surface. So this is possible because of the presence of ocean. Okay, so evaporation means is a process by which water changes into vapor. And condensation means process by which the water vapor um, changes into water droplets. Okay. Then next one is a moderation of climatic extreme now it will prevent the water body that is the oceans they prevent the uh, climate uh, sorry they prevent the extreme of climate now take the example of the places located near to the water body so they will experience moderate equable or maritime climate that is neither very hot nor very cold and how this is possible means it's due to the influence of the water body okay so therefore they will experience they means the coastal areas will experience whatever climate, moderate climate. And the last one is maintaining the earth's heat budget. Now what is this heat budget? Okay, It's a balance between the incoming solar radiation and the outgoing terrestrial radiation. So this balance is maintained by the oceans. Okay, So these are the four, uh, sorry, the seven importance of uh, oceans. So oceans are very important or they are the important component of the 
a hydrosphere. That hydrosphere means it's a layer of, it's, it's the second uh, important water body. Okay, the first largest is your ocean and second one your sea. Now what is sea? It is an extension of the ocean surrounded partially by land. That means it is the division or is the extended portion of the ocean and lake which is partially, means not completely, but partially surrounded by land. Then second feature is it is shallower than the ocean and smaller in size than an ocean. Shallow means not very deep. It is not as deep as the ocean and in terms of size also it is smaller or smaller than the, smaller than the oceans. So sea is an extension of the ocean surrounded partially by land and it is shallow and smaller than an ocean. So now see the importance. First one, commercial fishing ground. That means some of the seas in the world, okay, they are rich in fish. So therefore they have developed uh, as one of the richest fishing ground in the world. Then number two, oil and gas drilling. So um, from this, uh, some of the seas also, okay, from there we can drill the uh, oil, that's petroleum and even the natural gas and these are the important source of energy for us. The next one is the transportation. So seas, like it plays an important or they play an important role in international trade. As you can see here on page uh, 13, 90% of the goods traded in the world are transported using sea route. So therefore they are important means of or the mode of transportation for especially the trade, okay, international trade. So now let's see the classification of seas based on the degree of isolation in the sea and they are inland sea or it's also known as land locked. Now marginal seas are the division of ocean, okay, like you know, they are the portion of the ocean which are partially surrounded, enclosed by islands, archipelagos and peninsula. So, as we know, the seas are the division of, or they are the extension of the ocean only, isn't it? So, marginal sea is also the division of ocean, which is partially surrounded by islands. Island means it's a, a piece of land surrounded by water on all the sides. Then, archipelago is a group of islands. And peninsula is a land surrounded by water on three sides. So, marginal sea are the portion or the, they are the division of an ocean, okay, which are partially surrounded by the land. Then, peninsula, the example is Indian Peninsula. The southern portion of India forms a peninsula as it is surrounded by water bodies on three sides. Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean. So the examples are Caribbean Sea, Bering and the Arabian Sea. Okay, so we'll do this with the help of the map later on. Now inland sea, as the name itself, it's landlocked. That means these seas are completely surrounded by land. Okay, and they are shallow sea. They are not deep. They are shallow sea that is completely enclosed by land. Whereas in your marginal sea, they are partially enclosed by land. Whereas in inland sea, they are completely surrounded by or enclosed by land. So example, Caspian Sea, Black Sea, now lakes. So actually lakes are the small water body which are surrounded by land on all the sides. Okay, so see here, water bodies of varying sizes surrounded by land on all the sides known as the lakes. And these lakes are the source of fresh water. Okay, fresh water means it's a water uh, which has a low content of dissolved salt. And most of these lakes are found in the northern hemisphere. And uh, uh, North America, okay, it's the largest, um, what do you say, it has the largest number of lakes in the world. And lakes are found in all the continent except Antarctica. Okay, in Antarctica there are no lakes. So now see the importance. Number one, they are the source of fresh water, okay? Number two, fresh water, as I told you, they are uh, free of dissolved salt and it's used for all the activities. Number two, serve as a commercial fishing ground, that means they are rich in fish. Number three, they help in maintaining the aquatic, that's a water ecosystem. Number four, generation of hydropower, that's a generation of hydroelectricity. 
and number five, okay, that I've missed out, uh, it promotes, uh, like it attracts a lot of tourists also. Therefore, lakes, it promotes tourism. So the examples, Lake Baikal, Chilka, lakes and all. Now the next one is your, next water body is your river. Now what is a river? It is the channel of water, okay, that flows, that originate in the mountain, they flow down the slope and finally they join the sea or the ocean or the lakes. So you see here, they are the perennial or seasonal channel of water which flows from highland source, that's from the mountain, through the lowland towards an open sea or ocean. That means they are what type of water body? Perennial means like they flow throughout the year. Like some of the rivers, they are snow fed. They get water throughout the year from the melting of the ice or the glaciers. And seasonal means they are rain fed. So they are either perennial or seasonal channel of water. That's a body of water. And they originate way in the highland. That's a mountain. And they flow down the lowland down the slope through the lowland and finally they'll drain their water in the open sea or ocean or even in the inland uh, inland they form an inland drainage so here you have to remember the three important uh, points regarding the river the first one is your source okay source then tributary then your next one is your mouth of the river now, what are actually this? Source means the point where the river originates. The beginning of the river is known as a source. So, in here, it's a, in the river, it's a highland, the mountains, isn't it? Then, tributary means a smaller stream when they join the larger stream. Okay, that's a tributary. The smaller streams are known as a tributary. Okay, when they join the major stream. And mouth means the portion, the point where the river water uh, join the open sea or the lakes or even the ocean. So that particular point is known as a mouth of the river. Okay, so please remember source, tributary and the mouth of the river. So now see the importance as the lakes, uh, like the lakes only, they are the source of fresh water. Okay, that's required for all the activity. They are the source of food. Food means we get fish. Then number three, they are the habitat for many plants and animals, the aquatic plants and animals. Habitat means like it's a natural condition, okay, the specific condition. Then number four, transportation, they enable transportation, okay, like for the trade and all. Then number five is the generation of hydroelectricity, they help in the uh, generation of hydropower. Then number six, fertile soil, okay, they, the river deposit fertile soil which is uh, ideal for the cultivation of crops. Then example 9, River 9, Amazon, Indus, Ganga. So these are the examples of rivers.